It's a great honor to um, you know, have um, Taniguchi-sensei uh, with us today. And um, as you know, at the Asia Society here in Tokyo, um, you know, we are very focused on uh, uncovering um, you know, how Japan works, what example Japan can give to the world. And of course, there's a lot of it always on entrepreneurship, on the economy, on defense policy. Um, but when you think about it, um, you know, very, very little discussion is about the judiciary. How does civil society, how does the rule of law actually work in Japan? How does it evolve? And what sort of entrepreneurial activities do civil activists take in order to shape the future of the legal system and thus the future uh, of really a very, very important part of society. So I'm very excited, um, you know, to uh, introduce uh, Taniguchi Sensei, um, you know, a real social entrepreneur uh, with a strong mission. And uh, without further ado, I'd uh, like to give the stage to you so that you can explain. Um, you know, um, why you are excited about what it is that you're doing, how you go about it, because he does not just run a civil liberties legal practice, but he actually also has a crowdsourcing digital platform uh, to actually make things happen. Taniguchi Sensei, the floor is yours. Well, thank, thank you for having me today. I know how challenging it is to run something new in the early morning, especially it is true that the subject matter is a law or judiciary, which has a magical power to put people to sleep. Um, however, I'm here today to awaken you to the fact that the potential, uh, judiciary still, had, still have a potential to bring about a positive change in the society in Japan. Here is a picture that I took nearby my office a couple of months ago. The blue sky is beautiful, but you often see the sky around your home or office. However, the sky hasn't always been such blue in Tokyo. This is a picture I took, no, not I. <laughs> this is a picture uh, taken in 1960s. You see the significant difference, right? Significant difference between the two skies. One is monochrome printing and one is full color printing. No, no, I'm not. That's not what I want to say. But you will see that the air quality has been dramatically improved. This change came from a woman, a mother who's kids whose child was severe asthma. She joined the forces with other parents of children who has a asthma and filed the litigation against the state, highway authorities, and the car manufacturers. The litigation took legacy, however, it ended in the res it resulted in a settlement which includes the promises to pay damages and also to implement the various regulations to reduce the air pollution. So the APM is from over 60 years, the APM is reducing constantly and the CO is also reducing constantly. And now more than 13 million people are enjoying the beautiful sky and the clear air in Japan, in Tokyo. So this type of litigation, the marginalized voices seek for justice through judiciary in the benefit of the society as a whole is called public interest litigations or impact litigations. This type of case is quite common in other countries. For example, the last year, I won the ruling from the Supreme Court that the National Review of Justice law is unconstitutional and invalid. These are the newspapers next day in the morning. 
but that is very rare case. In the US, for example, please go to the next slide. In the US, there's more than 110 cases at the national level, and there are more than like, uh, 400 cases in the state level. In Germany, in total, there are 800 cases, more than 800 cases. So why it's so rare in Japan? Because it's tough? Because it's hard? It's like uh, David and Goliath. Goliath, right? Do I pronounce right? <laughs> David and Goliath. So um, I have a confession to make. I once gave up being a lawyer after years of fighting in a litigation. The litigation is about the gentleman whose name is Mr. Slush. This gentleman who lived in Japan over more than 10 years, who is originally from Ghana, who had a Japanese wife, and who loved the music and the arts. This is a, one of the pieces that he painted. It's robbery. However, he had an issue with his residence, residency status. And he was facing the deportation. And one day, the immigration officer picked him up from the detention center and to uh, attempt it to put him on a tramp airplane to deport. He was handcuffed and he was ankle locked. They gagged him with a towel, prevented from not speaking. And it took six people to carry him up and put, put him to the plane. He forced to bend over and uh, push his head down and he lost consciousness and he never opened his eye again. His wife in Japan and his mother in Ghana um, became a plaintiff and uh, several lawyers and I formed a legal team to represent them. Uh, they didn't have the money and they didn't afford to for a legal fee so we decided to do a as a pro bono, um, we are human rights lawyers and not earning much money, so it's quite hard to like, do a big uh, lawsuits uh, for pro bono, but we decided because this case shouldn't be, be ignored. After three years of hearings, um, examining 10 witnesses, we won at the district court, the district court ru ruled that the state has a responsibility for Mr. Suraj's death. It seems as though the justice has been solved. However, the state appealed. They claimed that the Suraj's death was caused by the strange tumor in his, in his heart. His death caused by naturally. His death was suddenly caused by the like heart conditions, which hadn't been in the trouble for a lifetime. We thought, who would in the world will believe that's such an absurd story? However, in the appeal court, one and the, one after another, the state brought in the forensic doctors to testify in support of their claim. They stated, oh, it's because of her tumor. The forensic doctors usually worked for the state agencies. So I asked around all over the Japan whether there are any doctors who could help me, who could help us, but we couldn't find. The state spent a lot of money, hired researchers, even conducted experiments. 
and that they claimed the restraint, restraint was acceptable according to the um, laboratory uh, result. As a result, appeal court overturned the ruling of the district court and we lost. We spent enormous time and effort on that lawsuit. I wrote 100 pages of the arguments. I went to the university medical library every day to look up for the unfamiliar medical papers because we don't have any researchers. So we stayed up all night to translate the foreign papers with dictionaries because we didn't have money for translation. But we are unable to win. I was devastated. I was, I, I was hopelessness and I decided to quit the legal practice and I went to the US uh, to run the social work. To run, to study like, something new and in a new environment was refreshing. However, shortly after, the US has a, like, a presidential election which Mr. Trump was elected. Shortly after he took the office, he issued the presidential order, exec executive order, to restricting, to restrict the entry of the people um, from the Mi Middle Eastern countries, which was called Muslim travel ban. I thought um, the U.S. was known as the land of free, uh, the home to immigrant, uh, was changing. However, shortly after, on the same date, I saw the news of like a street interview that the gentleman was saying, it's time to court step in. What? I was so surprised because I, I hadn't never seen like in Japan the judiciary or the lawsuit was discussed in a such way. And the, Social media was flouted with a comment, like expecting the judiciary. And uh, the ACLU, the lawyers group, uh, was donate, like a donation to the ACLU was like a, tens of thousands of like, people are donating the ACLU and the uh, amount of money reached uh, millions just for, for a day. I saw watching the lawyers uh, sitting on the floor or in the airport interviewing um, the people prevented from like, traveling. At that night, I saw the news that the upturned the lawyer came from the gate from the federal court and saying that the presidential order, the federal court ordered the presidential order to be stopped. It's a victory for our society and the people are proud and people cheered from as the ground rumbled. I couldn't really stop my heart pounding in my chest and I said to me, like, I, I said to myself, like, did I do everything that I could do in Japan before I quit, before I discouraged? I work hard on that specific case, but I didn't ask for the help to the wider society. I didn't, like, um, I didn't adequately notify the people what is happening in the court. I didn't, maybe I should have like, um, asked the support for the wider range of individuals. And maybe result could be changed. After I graduated 
after the graduation, and uh, I worked in Detroit, and I met, uh, I, I saw the best practices, and I met the great lawyers. And then I decided to come back to Japan, and I start, started the new project, which is called Call4. Call4 is a web platform uh, which facilitates access to the public interest litigation. We provide the information, uh, we provide the stories of the plaintiffs, we, uh, we provide the stories of the background of the cases, we, with a professional pic, uh, photographer and the writers. We also provide a um, crowdfunding system to cover the legal cost. We should go to the next slide. So this is a um, crowdfunding site for the Marriage for All lawsuit. And we also provide a database uh, which provides like legal materials. Uh, everybody could read the legal materials. Because in Japan, uh, people only have access to the legal materials in the courtroom. So you cannot you cannot know what is going on, like uh, what, what, is the, uh, what is the debate looks like in the legal sphere. So it's natural that people are not interested in the um, debate in the courtroom. So from its inception uh, three years ago, it has been quite successful. Uh, we have supported the more than 45 cases um, on the, the diverse topic, including uh, same-sex marriage or um, the hate speech against uh, foreign nationals, um, the mistreatment in the uh, detention center. And uh, we gather um, more than half million um, US dollars uh, to, to eat like, uh, for the lawsuits. And uh, the supporters um, reached uh, more than 10,000 people. So we also like, received the media attention. Um, the legal scholars or the journalists recognized the, the information on our website uh, is a very important source of the information for them. So we succeeded quite significantly. However, we don't stop here. Uh, we want to take step one more, one the step one more further. We want to create the plat not only the platform uh, to support the existing lawsuits, but also to create the specialized law firm um, for the impact litigations. Because the crowdfunding sometimes defray the, to cover the legal expenses but not for the lawyer's fee. So lawyers almost always like, are doing a pro bono for those impact litigations. But it means they could like, deal with the two or three cases in their lifetime. Right. So it's not insufficient to confront, like, to challenge the state, which allocates a great resource to that. So we think oh, we need a, like a, we assemble to the team of top lawyers, researchers, and the other experts to like a, realize the real check and balance system in Japan. While Tokyo's sky became to be blue. There are many individuals who are suffering from human violations, facing the discriminations. It prevents our society from more just and more, more equal. So we want to accelerate. Uh, there are a lot of legal systems uh, have a room for more improvements. So we want to accelerate this step to create more diverse and just society. Um, so, and also we call for your support. Thank you.
I love your, your passion and your, <laughs> your, your enthusiasm comes through. And, and you know, certainly, I think, uh, you know, uh, everybody's glad that you're back, uh, that you didn't give up. Um, now, you know, in your own understanding, I mean, this, this system of checks and balances, mm -hmm. Uh, the system of civil society challenging the state. Mm -hmm. um, you know, why, in your personal opinion, you know, is it slower or less evolved um, in Japan compared to, um, you know, you've got the example of the United States mm -hmm. in your slides there in terms of the Supreme Court ruling, mm -hmm. um, the example of Germany, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, again, you know, turned uh, into a functioning democracy uh, only after the Second World War. Many parallels between Germany and Japan, mm -hmm. certainly from a economic as well as from a systemic perspective. Mm -hmm. But in Germany, you know, wh why is it that in Japan this this give and take, the checks and balances, in your personal opinion, why, why is it uh, um, not so evolved? Mm. Um. I think the one reason is, uh, of course, the culture. Our culture is kind of like a following the, like, uh, do you know the term Okami? Okami is a, like a government or, you know. Uh, I, am, I am from Germany. My <laughs> grandfather and my father were very good at Okami. Oh, but, really? you know, but society has evolved, mm -hmm. right? But so, so there is, there's, a, there's a hierarchical, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, structure in Japan, yeah. right? What, 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 so that's, that's a cultural yes, background. Cultural background as well. Um, also, that the, we have like a dominant party uh, and they quite uh, well manage the, the you know, Japanese society. Uh, and the people are not like realizing uh, that the, some, some problem uh, is happening you know, in the society. Uh, they are not well informed. Um, so maybe that, that is a, one. The like a political reason mm. is also the one another reason. Mm, mm, mm. No, I mean look. I mean this is this is a fascinating topic that uh, you know. But 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 it's interesting. You know, do you sense that you know since you've come back and since you've started your your impact enterprise, mm, mm, mm. Um, you know, it, it's, you know what are, what are, what is the, the the reception that you get mm -hmm. from? Is there a generational difference? The older generation, how they react versus the younger generation? How how you know how how is momentum? Uh, okay, so um, if we like uh, say something on the social media, the like uh, the younger generations. Are surprised. Oh, we didn't know that, that we have a, such a way to change the society. And uh, if we, I was on the article on the newspaper, the older generation was surprised that in the same way. You know, we didn't know that, that, that we have a, such a way to change the society. So it's surprising that because the judiciary has been like, uh, here, you know, for uh, over 17 years after the World War II, but they didn't know that the judiciary has the potential to change the society. So it's a common like in the various gener generations. Mm -hmm. So it's also surprising to me. <laughs> yeah. what, was, what is like when you, when, you, when you make the case in your community, in mm -hmm. the legal community, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, what, what is the biggest pushback uh, that you get? Um, they are quite like... Uh, react very like uh, uh, in favor of us uh, they didn't ever imagine that oh we could be found by the like people <laughs> they are not imagined like like that so they are very like uh, also surprised and uh, they are very expecting our um, calls hi Taniguchi san my name is uh, Jerry Black I'm with Eon Group I appreciate your comments I, I want to dig a little bit deeper into this concept of structure versus culture and mm -hmm. how to make change happen. And as background, I've been on a number of boards here in Japan and often it includes a retired chief prosecutor or a retired Supreme Court judge mm -hmm. or a retired superior, superior court judge. And one thing that I noticed they all have in common is they don't really enjoy being challenged. Mm -hmm. And um, I've often noticed this, even sometimes with their external attorneys, they may refer to this board member as sensei. And so very deferential in terms of the respect of the judges, and they've all come up through the prosecutorial system, so they're very close to the prosecutor. So I guess my, my main question is, 
is this kind of culture a result of the structure, meaning not having a separation of power, or is the structure the result of kind of this Japanese culture of deference to seniority and uh, authority figures and sensei and so forth? So for example, um, 14 years ago, and this is kind of a second question, 14 years ago, uh, one retired chief prosecutor of, of Japan uh, was very proud of the introduction of the layperson jury and asked me what I thought how this was going to change Japan, and I said, nothing's going to change. <laughs> I said, it's not going to change because the judges are going to tell the layperson juries what to do anyways, mm -hmm. and be, because of that culture. So if you had one thing to change, mm -hmm. what would you do first? Would it be structure, separation of the powers, or would it be kind of creating this atmosphere of being able to have open debate? I think the, the topic of the public in public interest litigation is uh, quite like uh, has a quite complex background so you cannot judge which is like a right immediately um, because uh, for example like um, the system of the election uh, which is very difficult to um, like a uh, set up so but we just don't know what is going on right so uh, what is like discussing, because we are not, we are not like uh, used to the discussion, like in the like a school, uh, in the company. Um, so, for example, when I was in Michigan, uh, I went to the Supreme Court, uh, and I was so surprised because the judges talked a lot, right? Uh, so, in like a, the defense uh, like uh, making uh, uh, their arguments and the, the judges stop it oh i have a question that last last weekend that i went to the party or something like that right so i was so surprised because in the supreme court the judges never talked in the history except the chief judges say start right so i saw the significant difference about the um like the their way of thinking or the body of the discussion. Um, because, you know, I, I know the judges in the U.S. Uh, has a, like a position like a right wing or a conservative or, you know, liberal. But they all believe the body of the discussion and, you know, exchanging the opinion and to create the, um, like, like a sphere of, like, and, you know, to, to make, um, like, to reach the best way, you know, they are like a, they just believe in the discussion. So maybe that's a, like a big biggest point, you know, in Japan that the, they just don't know the value of the, you know, talking and voicing up. Thank you, and I appreciate your coming, to Terry Porte. I'm one of the founders of uh, Asia Society Japan. We're delighted to have you here. So uh, a good part of what you seek to achieve requires judicial reform. So my question is, what kind of engagement do you have with politicians? What are their thoughts about this? And to put it in context, Japan has taken quite a beating outside of Japan internationally due to the Carlos Ghosn case. His supporters went to Geneva and they did receive a statement that his human rights were violated. Mm -hmm. You have uh, leading politicians in America mm. who have supported his case mm. on the basis that his human rights were violated. Actually, he got better treatment than the average Japanese prisoner would get. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, uh, that is the issue. But the broader question, what are politicians saying and how much engagement are you having with them? I engaged in the two lawsuits. Uh, one case, they win uh, in the court, and that they lost. And that, but the, we couldn't get the ideal law, our ideal system. Not only um, like winning the uh, in the court in, at the court. So uh, we also do a lobbying after the um, after the result, like rulings. But the you know, uh, the politicians are very like, interested in the, our lobbying when we won the case at the court, 
But if we lost the case, they are not interested in because uh, you know. <laughs> um, That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> so and um, actually, we don't ha we don't have like a lobbying uh, groups, uh, professional lobbying groups or lobbying company um, who like. Uh, I worked for the human rights organizations. We, we have a lobbying company it's like for working for the companies, uh, but we don't have a, like a groups of uh, people like who are doing a lobbying. So we don't know uh, how to do lobbying, you know, as well. So we just like knock the door and saying something that we want the case and to change and okay or something like that. So maybe we should brush up like uh, that our skills or our system of lobbying or to. To, uh, to have a discussion with the politicians, um, and maybe that if we have a, like a judicial victory and combining that those those systems, maybe we will reach that um, the higher like uh, result. However, that some lawyers are now trying to go to the Geneva, actually, you know, um, to the to reach out the international organizations and to uh, have some warning to the Japanese government, and, and then um, actually they filed uh, the, for the first time in Japan that the, the, they violate the international law, not like domestic law. Uh, so it's a new challenge that the, we kind of bring in the standards of the international. So I, I think that is a, one of the good way to change the Japanese society because they are very conscious about you know, what the other side, you know, and the uh, other countries are saying. I mean, which is interesting, right? Because that's gaiatsu, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that, that effectively, you know, sort of the inertia, you know, the lack of debate, um, you know, the lacking that, Talmud spirit, right, of finding, you know, evolution, um, you know, in debate and challenging authority because, you know, the system allows it because as, as, as the case of, you know, as the case of the Clean Air Act uh, effectively here in Japan, you know, shows. so the, the system allows it. It's just that it's not being utilized, um, you know, which is, which is interesting. So, you know, of course, there may be need for very specific legal reform, right? But much more important is that civil society mm. needs to rise, mm. right? So, which is what is really interesting, because if you look at civil society in the blog sphere, right, everybody's outraged about a thousand things here in Japan as well. But then actually getting to doing something about it, mm. you know? Mm. That's, that's, I think, where it's going to be. What are your, your role models that, that, you, uh, uh, that you have? Um, maybe you heard about like, uh, Mr. Brian Stevenson, uh, who is a quite like, a famous lawyer um, in Alabama and uh, who worked for uh, the people in uh, death row. Um, and he just doing the, his own work for like, uh, 10 years and then but uh, he gathers uh, very, like, a support from the, all over the U.S. and then uh, he had a great power to change the, uh, change the policy. So um, I read the book uh, Just Mercy uh, in the Detroit and then it like, impacted like, uh, the model. Oh. Can you say the name of the book and the name again? Just, just Mercy. Just Mercy. Right? Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. Right. Okay. It's very right. And what about perfect. sort of from an organizational, you know, perspective? I mean, you've got. Uh, yeah. So you have a great organizations at the ACLU. Uh, you know, ACLU in the U.S. Uh, has a very strong power uh, to change the society. So I, I told you that the, I got the eleventh like uh, the ruling from the Supreme Court, it was a 11th case in the history, only the 11th, right? So, but the, I think ACLU has a 24 cases at this moment in the, in the Supreme Court for this year, mm. and the last year, I, I mean. So it's a significant difference and they have like millions of the budget mm. uh, from the CBO like donations. So maybe uh, the ACLU is one of the uh, model that uh, mm. I should seek for.
We have a question from um, Cyberspace, uh, Benson Mute, I think. Um, the question is, are the number of legal cases also an indication of alternative dispute resolution mechanisms? Court cases can be lengthy and while sometimes necessary, necessary. Can Japan teach the U.S. and other countries? Does Japanese society better account for extra externalities in economic activities such as pollution minimizing, the, the need for such cases? It means the alternative way to resolve the case. Yeah, that, I mean, is, America is very litigious, oh, right? Okay. And while Japan, you know, sort of the, the non-litigation yeah. settlements. Oh, okay. Um, maybe I think, I feel that is one of the illusion, right? <laughs> one of the myths that the Japan has, like, uh, has a value that uh, like, harmony is important and so they could solve the problem, uh, you know, in, no, like, uh, not with the litigations. But the, in the reality, uh, the, the people who have a strong power, uh, you know, just solve the problem that the, the way that they they like. Uh, so the people doesn't have a legal access. As I mentioned, that the people are very uh, surprised that, that they didn't know that oh that there is a judicial system in Japan and uh, they have a power. So um, I have been working for the legal access uh, for the like civilians, but. Um, Usually that the people doesn't have access because of the money, like financial reasons, because of the information gap. Um, so I, I don't think that the Japan developed the other way of solutions. Um, my name is Annie Chang. Um, I just want to add to what you talk because I have been to Japanese court and I was actually adding as myself to settle a case which trying to against my company. So I understand a little bit, but not on the human rights situation. You just mentioned about the Japanese legal system is very focused on harmony and settlement, which that can also benefit for the people like us with small business. Um, we really don't have money to hire a lawyer to settle any cases. But the court, when I've been to the court, I represented myself. I represent, I get gathering all the paperwork. And I, I try to speak in English because in Japanese it's very difficult for me to explain very well. So I speak English and I write everything down in paper. I present to the judge. And in the end, actually judge is all in my side. As you say, the Japanese judge doesn't talk too much, right? But for me, I think I actually benefit from that legal system, which they have sympathy, they have empathy in a way, you know, as what I present the truth. I'm telling the truth, I'm telling the story. And that actually gain a lot of sympathy on my side. So I just want to kind of share this with everybody. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you so much. So I think that your experience uh, showed uh, one of the key to change the you know, um, judicial system. Um, because you know, after we started the call for, and uh, people are very interested in what's going on in the courtroom, the judges are very conscious about that, right? Judges are paying attention to uh, who is watching them, that the, who is interested in that. Um, so we actually, the, the cases that we support won a lot um, because the people are like, paying attention to that and the judges are thinking, oh, what are they wanting? Not mm -hmm. only the plaintiff, that what's the society are expecting us? So it could be changes break a judicial the judges as well I mean it's interesting right because I mean there's obviously again I'm, I'm, I'm not a legal expert whatsoever right but I mean you know I mean the, 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 the system does work right um, you know the question is you know the, the, the actual evolution of things right um, you know I mean if you look at something 
uh, you know, the, 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 the Clean Air Act, right? Mm -hmm. um, but more importantly, society evolves, mm -hmm. right? And same-sex marriage, for yeah. example, right? Um, you know, is, is something that, that drags on, mm -hmm. right? Um, in, in Japan, the human rights violation, right? As highlighted by, you know, your own organization, by the big high-profile Carlos Ghosn case, by, um, you know, the, the um, you know, various other organizations. I mean, you know, Japan is sort of in the spotlight there, yeah, yeah. right? So from, from your perspective, right, um, what, are, what are sort of the, the, the three or four key areas where I think that there is a need mm -hmm. to evolve further? One is uh, gender equality. Um, maybe you know the litigation about the same surname law in Japan. Uh, so in Japan, that the, uh, the couples are forced to have the same surname, and uh, usually the women are forced to change their name, and they, it is very inconvenient. And there is actually that no reason for that, like, no ground for that law, um, but it continues. And uh, however, the lawsuit is a kind of media. Uh, the you know women are thinking, oh, it's strange, or like, uh, like uh, it's, it's not good for me. But they didn't like, uh, um, like uh, be conscious about that. But that if the, they watch the video news about the litigations, they think, oh, it's actually strong and it's illegal. And the, the, um, the power from the uh, like ordinary people will be gathered uh, through the media, uh, through the judiciary, uh, through the lawsuits. So I think that one of the one of the key areas is uh, about the gender uh, gender equality, and one the another thing is a treatment for the foreign neighbors and the foreign nationals. Um, the law system is based on the Supreme Court decision, which was ruled in 1978. It was 43 years ago. Mm. I know because, uh, I'm sorry, because I was born in 1978. <laughs> so, uh, but it didn't change for over 43 years, even though that the world becomes so international, like uh, Japan like, has a lot of like, uh, foreigners, um, but the Supreme Court says um, the foreign nationals here in Japan has a human rights within uh, their residency status. But the human rights is human rights, right? So um, it's very strange, but it didn't change. So I, I think uh, one more like, a key area is to change the uh, um, the Supreme Court uh, ruling and to change the treatment for the foreign nationals, mm. uh, hate speech and the racial profiling uh, and like uh, something like that. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, mm. Um, and the one more thing, um, I think that now Japan is a very hyper aging society. Hyper aging society. The people are getting old and the young. Every day, I, I feel it. <laughs> Same to me. <laughs> Same to me. But, yeah. This is a topic I'm curious about. So the maiden name issue in Japan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering whether the following absolute fact is ever used in this debate. Mm -hmm. Every Japanese woman who marries a foreigner keeps her maiden name. Every single one. Does that have any standing at the court? Uh, you mean the, we're going to like make a cause that the? No, it's a precedent. My wife is Japanese. Mm -hmm. On the family register, she keeps her name. Mm -hmm. I'm off there on the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, all of my children mm -hmm. registered in Japan yeah. have her name. Yeah. Not my name her name. Mm -hmm. This is a precedent. Mm -hmm. So the notion that it's impossible, it can't happen, it's against the law. No, there are thousands, tens of thousands of Japanese women <laughs> who have kept the maiden name by law. That's right. By law. Does that not have any standing? Yeah, so actually there was uh, one lawsuit 
the couple, like a Japanese couple who got married in the US, is of course that they have a different uh, maiden name, and they came to Japan and they try to confirm that the, are we married or not? <laughs> because, you know, and then the court says, yes, you are married. Um, it's actually that there is like a conflict between the laws, you know, the interpretation of laws, and it shows how ridiculous the system is. Yeah. yeah. So we think there is enough ground to challenge the law, but it hasn't been succeed. So uh, we, sh we should make an another litigation for that. <laughs> earlier in your conversation about lack of information and lack of transparency and people don't have access to this information until they get to the court system. My, my observation is that in Japan, uh, many of the laws are relatively abstract and vague and nuanced, whereas in Germany the language is very bimodal and English the language is bi very bimodal. But my question for you is, how much of that do you think has to do with constitution, culture, or just a way for the bureaucrats to retain power? Um, enable, being able to arbitrarily define decisions based upon the abstractness of, of, of the laws themselves. Yeah, I think that all the factors are very quite uh, playing a key role uh, for this system. Uh, the constitutional is quite big. Um, but it still has a power because the constitution is the only way to challenge the other laws, right? So, um, however, that maybe I don't know the, the specific political power uh, is has been very dominant in this country. Uh, so they have <coughs> a, a power to interpret the laws, um, and. And that it's it's not flexible. That once the litigation, uh, no, no, once the registration uh, set up the law, uh, it's very difficult to change. Uh, for example, I I talked about the my case about the National Review of Judges. Um, so when I was in Detroit, I tried to vote for the uh, the, the judge, but uh, I was rejected. And then I became the plaintiff, and I also became a lawyer for myself. Um, but the reason that they say, oh, we cannot bring the voting street to all over the world. But, you know, it's, it's just like insane that because we, are, we have emails, right? <laughs> so we have like a um, mailing system, very, uh, very, very express mailing system. So, but they just didn't change for 20 years, and the more than one, no, 13, 13 million people uh, outside of Japan uh, just couldn't vote for 20 years. Right. So that is because just the law didn't change. Right? There, was, there was no reason, and so they, lost, uh, the, they have a power to interpret, in, inter, for the interpretation of the law, they, they have a power to create a law, but if they didn't realize, if they didn't know how convenient and uh, you know, how it violates the, uh, the human rights law, they just didn't change. Because everybody knows that, that there is a someone who could point out, oh, you were wrong, right? I didn't know how to, like, uh, which direction how to cut the onion is the best way before I got married. <laughs> but, you know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, my w wife pointed out, oh, maybe this direction is better. And then, oh, I didn't know for over 30 years, right? <laughs> so but this is a really tiny like, example, but um, people need somebody for the check and balance to point it out that the, it's a better way, there is a better way to, like, to do, like, to manage. Yeah. But it, it's it's very interesting because I think you know that that because the 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 opaqueness 
of things, the space in between, and as a result of that, the empowerment of the actual on the grounds bureaucrats, technical labs, regulators, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, the gray zone is very comfortable, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, for the technocrats. Now, the gray zone also allows for what you described, for sort of a human touch, because it is not just black and white, right? Mm -hmm. So there is room for maneuver here. Mm -hmm. But what is interesting in this whole debate to me is that, you know, here we have um, a strong, very strong attempt, a growing attempt to change the constitution, right? Mm -hmm. Now, changing the constitution, right, is obviously that's the ultimate law, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, if, if that's not a democratized process, mm -hmm. if civil society, you know, doesn't know how to deal with that and where the right checks and balances are, because it's, it's, it's fine, of course, there's going to have to be a referendum. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to get to is, do you think that with this move that is gathering momentum to change the national constitution, that as a result of that, organizations like yourself, right, also the consciousness that indeed, yes, this is a civil society, the judiciary is capable of evolving, can be challenged, uh, you know, the state versus individuals versus groups, etc. Do you think that, you know, that, that, that you know, this is a... A, a road that now is going to start to evolve so that when we sit here in 20, 30 years, you know, it won't be 11 cases, mm. uh, you know, where the Supreme Court, uh, you know, has made a decision. But, you know, it will be, you know, hundreds of cases. Mm. What, 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 what are your thoughts on that? Um, the strong forces trying to change the Constitution in Japan now is uh, people who have a power right now. So they want to interpret the Constitution in their way. Um, so, because the Constitution is a kind of like, you know, um, the, disturbing them, okay? because, because of that, that they cannot uh, implement the, the policies that they want. Um, so they want to change the Constitution. So, um, but I think that this is a very good opportunity to discuss and think about uh, what the constitution, so what's the democracy, what the law, uh, like uh, what we really want to have, um, if we have a space for discussion. Um, but I, I, I think we are not ready for that. Uh, so we have to let the people know that they educate the people um, how the constitution works and how uh, the interpretation of the constitution right now has a uh, you know a program or the like a, 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 a good thing those kind of things so we we should like you know uh, discuss a lot um, before going to the refer referendum if without doing that that's just giving more power to the like, authorities. But it's interesting, right, because that's, that's an issue that all of us face, right? I mean, you know, how does a system, how does the Japanese system evolve, right? Mm -hmm. And in, in business, it mm -hmm. used to be famous for Kaizen, mm -hmm. right, that you do have incremental improvement. You know, you don't have big radical break, you don't have radical disruption, mm -hmm. but you do have Kaizen. But from everything that I'm hearing today is that on the legal side, you know, I mean, there is Kaizen, but it's in super slow motion. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, right. Exactly. I mean, I mean, there's, there's great examples, right? We have freedom of the press, but we don't have open meeting laws, mm -hmm. right? So if you write negative things, you may not be invited. We have equal employment opportunity laws, but we don't really have enforcement or penalties for violation of those things. And I keep coming back to the uh, Fukushima mm -hmm. example. In the U.S., it's very specifically codified if the pressure inside the reactor reaches a certain level, you have to vent the reactor. Uh, in Japan, it was a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more vague, and nobody had the courage to vent the reactor. <laughs> and, and so those kind of things are more codified. Mm -hmm. I, th I think look, th this is this is this is absolutely fascinating, yeah, and yeah. you know we we can we can we can go on forever. But let's let's uh, you know for the final moment sort of focus a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know the law and changing the law and challenging the law and fostering debate costs money, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, 
talk to me a little bit about you know what your organization is trying to do to raise money um, what has been some of the success that you've had and how um, you know how do you think that uh, you, you're going to be able to gather more momentum and raise not just awareness but actually raise the funds so that you can raise the awareness thank you so much for asking this um, so the name about my organization, the Call for, is you know, Call for Action, Call for Support. Um, so the story that I told you that uh, I need like, a more support from the various uh, range of individuals, it might be the donations, it might be the skills or knowledge, because the public education, you, you come up with uh, like a reactor, but we don't have a knowledge you know, uh, about the reactor, but somebody knows that. Um, so we need uh, those knowledge, um, and some experts could join the, our join the, our course, and um, so we want like uh, ask for the donations, skills, network, and uh, volunteers. Uh, so many various um, like uh, forces uh, will give us a big power. We are. We have a plan uh, to create a specialized law firm uh, in the future, uh, and the annual budget will be, this is like based on the Japanese yen, um, so 92 million for the uh, first year, and the 118 million uh, for the second year, uh, and the OSF fund, Open Society Fund, uh, funded by the Mr. George Soros, uh, decided to fund us uh, 35 million, uh, 35 thousand US dollars uh, for two years. Um, so that could be the seed money for our uh, law firm, but uh, we need more. So we are going to have, um, which one? We are, oh, Open Society Fund will provide the funding for two years. Um, now we want to create a network of affiliated lawyers in, in each region, not only Tokyo. Um, so if there is a five million donations can pay for the litigation costs uh, for one case. Uh, Ten million um, Japanese yen can hire researchers, and uh, twenty million can hire a lawyer, uh, the top lawyer. I mean, um, so we are going to have an in inaugural fundraiser dinner on April 6, 2022, uh, this year. Uh, April 6th, <laughs> and uh, so if you are interested in uh, some supports and any like uh, uh, the volunteers and the skills, and just shoot me the email. And so you can. This is a contact form that the, if you the people online that um, there is a Google form that you can submit. Uh, so we are call for your support. <laughs> Wow, I mean, <laughs> fantastic. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm very glad, um, uh, you know, that uh, for your remarks, um, you know, again, your, your passion, um, and, uh, you know, that you are professionalizing, um, you know, in a, in a very, very good way, um, you know, the effort there. I do hope that uh, many of you can join uh, the fundraiser on April 6th and uh, spread the word a little bit. Um, you know, we are all about, um, you know, the impact um, that uh, social entrepreneurs, um, you know, have. And, uh, you know, we wish you the best of, uh, uh, of luck and, uh, you know, the, we will support you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you so much Great. for this opportunity. Thank you.